We are thrilled to announce Midas is launching our community ecosystem governance program to truly uphold our mission of bringing blockchain to the people. As we move further down the path toward decentralization, the Community Ecosystem Governance Program invites our community to verify projects on the Metis network. While we remain a permissionless platform, we're introducing Metis Governance Snapshots to give our ecosystem back to the community and allow you to vote for the projects you care about most. Projects will be able to apply through our governance system for consideration, and through the voting process, the Metis team will empower the community to verify projects and inform our marketing and promotion decisions. In service of decentralization, we need your support to make our network the Web3 home for everyone. Be sure to stay tuned to our social channels to stay informed and cast your votes. Now is the time to bring Metis to the people. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our community ecosystem governance live stream. Um, I've got the team members from Redacted with me. I've got Magnus and Figgy, and I'm really excited to have them on today. This is, um, I think it's like a 30 or 32nd episode of CEG. So thanks for sticking with us um, as we kind of uh, roll out the process of decentralization and give developers on Metis a chance to connect directly with the Metis community and offer Metis community members an opportunity to learn more about the projects that are coming onto the network so that when we have our snapshot votes, you can make informed decisions um, and, and remain engaged with the projects that you're most excited about. So yeah, without further ado, let me introduce the Redacted team. Magnus, would you like to start with a little introduction of yourself? And we'll move over to Figgy. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, hey guys, my name's Magnus. Um, uh, yeah, a little bit of background for myself. I started crypto like 2013 um, and just sort of stayed active in it. And it wasn't sort of until, I don't know, the beginning of DeFi summer that I started to get uh super active within DAOs and such and that's effectively how i met most of the other core team members um through a social DAO called kraus house and then um yeah sammy hit me up asked me if i was down to help out and then um the rest is history so um yeah that's me in a nutshell i'll hand that over now to you figgy yeah so i started pretty like low level early in DeFi. So started like community managing and just slowly worked my way up. As as I worked my way up, started uh, speaking with Sammy because we worked on the same L1 as before. And just, he invited me over through to redact it. And he said, we're starting a new project. I would love it if you could help out like some marketing stuff, some community stuff. And uh, as as fast as like, my my way is working up i met magnus my rest of the guys and we just launched redacted i know it sounds like pretty easy when you say it like that but it was a lot harder than, than that for sure it was a lot harder yeah it's pretty simplified here <laughs> with these uh speed runs right <laughs> yeah in the hindsight you you think about all the the challenges all the scraped knees but here you are um, well, I'm really excited. Redacted is, um, well, Hidden Hand Protocol is a, a, just a really interesting protocol that I'd not even heard of before um, I was introduced to you. So can you tell a little a bit about what Hidden Hand Protocol is and how it works to uh, share it with our community? Yeah, I can take this one real quick. So uh, Hidden Hand is one of the products within the Redacted Cartel um like the protocol in itself. Um, and basically to give you a bit of an overview of what it actually is, it's a marketplace in which um, we help assist protocols like monetize the governance. So what I mean by that is basically users can basically, it's a marketplace where like um, protocols or even individuals can post up like incentives or what we um more commonly refer to them as bribes. And basically you can get paid to vote for a particular proposal. So whether that's like through the gauges to incentivize uh, rewards and emissions, 
or you know maybe if you wanted to sway a particular like nft collections um you know say on floor dow or something like that you can post up bribes and then utilize the governance power so that's basically what hidden hand is in a nutshell a bribes slash incentives marketplace Awesome. Thank you. So projects can, they have a proposal that they want to push through or they want uh, to, to really boost engagement for. They can post bribes on the Hidden Hand Marketplace and then voters can go there to see, you know, what proposals are, are offering incentives and then they can delegate their votes um, to receive a share of those rewards. Yeah, you got it. Cool. So how Expert does, now. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've had this conversation a few times. So how does, um, how does the, the allocations work? So if I've got, um, you know, if I'm holding some governance tokens and I want to delegate them and then, you know, several other people also do that, how does it work for the, the, the split of the incentives? Um, yeah, that one's pretty simple. So if I was, say, uh, a particular individual, um, I put up uh, a certain amount of incentives or bribes, and you know, I wanted to sway the vote in a particular direction. You know, to my own bias. Um, you and Figgy, um, you know, as two separate holders, and maybe you hold like seventy percent of the particular like vote that was um, the amount of like tokens that were like in terms of like the voting power say you had 70% and then say Figgy had like 10% and then there's some other randoms in uh, that participated in that vote. Effectively, once that like vote closes, you would then receive 70% of the rewards that like uh, were posted up. So it's quite straightforward, um, nothing overly complex. And um, yeah, that's pretty much how it works. Very cool. And if a project wanted to um, to open their own or to, to put a bribe on the marketplace, and how would that work? Uh, yeah, that one's pretty simple. Um, we just need to whitelist the actual token. Um, generally, it can be you know any particular altcoin or stablecoin or whatever coin that the um, yeah, an individual desires, basically. So whatever it is that tickles their fancy, more or less. Cool. Yeah, to add on top of that, projects in the past have just messaged us yeah, they simply ask if we can add their their addresses. And then we have like a whole list of whitelist address from different protocols as well. So like we've had over like what 20 different protocols bribe on hidden hand and I could say a good like five of them easily like have messages to add them to, to the whitelist. Yeah, I suppose it's in the early stages, it's mainly just for us to determine and vet these tokens, like you know, most of the stuff that do uh, so protocols that do participate, um, you know, in these sort of bribes and everything, like they're fairly well known anyway. So there's no like real risk of anything that's like, you know, a potential rug or something shady or anything like that. Cool. That, uh, having the, the bribes on the marketplace uh, tends to increase voter engagement and encourages more people to uh, learn a little bit about the proposal or get a little more involved in the project. Uh, yeah, I personally think it does increase engagement, but it also um, it, it gives rise to the fact that like the token that you hold actually can become more productive beyond just governance power. You can actually get a little bit of cream on the side as well, if that if that makes sense. Um, and because there's some incentivization, um, it you know, it's in your best interest to align yourself with the protocol in the long term too. So it can be quite beneficial, even though the terminology that we use is kind of tongue in cheek. Um, but, you know, incentives make the world go around. And um, yeah, ultimately, it does help with engagement, we feel. And um, it's been something that's pretty, pretty cool beyond um, just plain old vanilla governance. Yeah, I think it's exciting to for people to have some incentive to be engaged with what's going on as you know, I think DAO governance can be a little messy. I mean, really any organization that has humans involved is going to have some bumps in the road. Um, but having the opportunity for people to earn for, for their support is, is really awesome. So what, um, how many protocols are, have bribes on hidden hand or have had bribes on in, hidden hand?
Yeah, so we've had uh, like around twenty odd uh, protocols, if if I'm if I'm not mistaken, um, and that's growing. Um, and it realistically, um, you know, any particular protocol that happens to have some sort of like vote escrow type system, um, you know, happy to. Uh, th there's quite a lot of other different protocols that actually approach us that are intrigued on how they can actually sort of like incorporate the this sort of like incentives mechanism and like, you know, we're happy to discuss with these and help, help them ideate on that as well. Cool. So yeah, what to is add on... Oh, sorry. Go... No, go ahead. No, go, go. <laughs> I, I want to say just like, we're also multi-chain. So it's not just main at ETH as well. So we're actually on optimism as well. And we're looking at different avenues to go maybe to Arbitrum, look at other, especially in this case, it would be Metis, right? <laughs> and then look at other avenues for, for multi-chain as well. Very cool. Uh, so what would you say like the the volume of, of these bribes are? Like what does the average like incentive pool look like? Or do you have numbers on like um, kind of the, the volumes across the board? Uh, I think last we checked, it was around 450K weekly average, I believe. Um, let me just check that really quick right now so I don't pull that number out of nowhere. I think Figgy shared, uh, or you y'all shared on your Twitter recently um, that you'd reached an all time high of, um, of bribe volume on Hidden Hand. Yeah, we did. Um, I just, I just want to be sure. <laughs> Yeah, we, we yeah, I think it was last week or the week before. It was 700k all time high we, uh, volume on hand in hand. So that was a fantastic week for us. I think in the past we've been averaging around 400 to 500k every two weeks. That because that's kind of around when we do our numbers for our wire top. So, but it, it did reach an all time high, and we're gonna see even more progress. Like from from the early days of of hidden hands since its inception we saw around 100 to 200k but as as the weeks go on and as people really under start to understand what hidden hand is and and really grasp what what they can do with their governance power they're really trying to use that power and really trying to get in earned rewards for that right very cool yeah i i think that's that's really exciting that's a that's pretty large volume on, on a weekly basis um, what would you say uh, are some the best places that people can get in touch with the the redacted team or go to learn more about you know updates? Yeah, um, definitely. If you want to chat with us on a more like one to one basis, you know, definitely jump into the Discord. It's it's quite active, um, and we got a lot. We got a number of mods that are always uh, there to engage with you guys, or at least point you uh, in the right direction, or you know, to ping the team even uh, in terms of like updates, Discord is still one of the best places to go because uh, we host like bi-weekly community calls there as well. And then of course, you know, um, follow the Twitter and um, yeah, you'll be able to get everything hot off the press. <laughs> nice. I'll be sure to incorporate those links uh, when we share this video. Also, you have your own podcast, right? You have uh, the wiretap yeah, we do. Um, and we do that um, bi-weekly as well. So on the off weeks when we um, don't do the community calls, that's when we'll just drop like a bi-weekly update of all things redacted. <laughs> and if you're more of a reader, we do have our, our redacted newsletters. So the redacted files. So that's also another option. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, well, we also did a, a podcast together, which will will come out soon. So um, our community members can check that out if they want a little learn a little bit more about Hidden Hand. Um, and then we also made an explainer video. So that'll be shared soon as well. So hopefully a lot of resources for people to understand and start searching for bribes on the marketplace. And now they know where to go if they have questions. Thank yeah, you guys so uh, much. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Thanks for having us. And um, yeah, just reach yeah. out if you guys are curious to know more. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah.